Hey guys, Chris from Cheyenne Exotics here, and today I'm making a Bearded Dragon care video. Um, ironically, I don't see a lot of these on YouTube, um, despite how popular Bearded Dragons are, so I figured I'd make one. Um, so, one of my biggest points is they are fantastic pets. I mean, look at this dude. Look at that dude. Not a care in the world. Most lizards, you do that to him. <laughs> he hates the camera, so he's a little pissed off, but he'll never bite me, because he's a good boy. But uh, most lizards, you know, you toy with them that much, eventually they're going to give you a nip. Like, even my leopard gecko, Lila, um, that some of you have seen on my channel, she's the sweetest thing on the earth, but, you know, you toy with her mouth too much, or you push her on the face, she'll give you a little nip to let you know she doesn't like it. But, for some reason, most bearded dragons don't care about anything. I actually just realized that uh, my baby bearded dragon is in the back and <laughs> I kind of move things around so now you can see him so he's a little bit pissed off. It's okay. It's okay. So they can get moody and you see they're generally super sweet. They're good creatures. They just don't like each other very much and that's why I really never recommend cohabitating bearded dragons because while females, it can work, they still tend to get aggressive towards each other. They're not social animals, they'll so they're solitary animals. And just because it works sometimes doesn't mean it'll always work. It's like with leopard geckos, eventually something is going to go wrong. You can't stop it from happening. They're not happier together, they're happier alone. So why don't you just let them do that? They're not in colonies in the wild, they're by themselves. So, yeah. But, uh... Other than that, they're they're pretty tame. They're a good like office pet or homework pet. You know, you stick them on your lap or on your shoulder, and they'll just kind of sit there and check things out. And as you can see, they're super inquisitive. Like I'm moving my fingers around because you know I'm talking, and he just follows my finger wherever it goes. And I think it's kind of cute because I'll be walking around my room, and <laughs> he'll just watch me the entire time. <laughs> um. So another big point that a lot of people and a lot of like pet store employees, especially like Petco and PetSmart, don't tell the people just getting into lizards, you know, specifically bearded dragons, is they get very big. Um, you know, compared to a lot of lizards, they're not really that big, but you know, they get about two feet long. Like, here's my hand next to him, you know, he's pretty comparable to it. And they have some, it's rumored, I don't know a ton about them, but they're called German Giants. And apparently they get like three and a half feet long, they get massive. But either way, they get about two feet long, you know, they don't stay the four or five inch baby you buy from Petco. And a lot of employees don't tell the people that. So be aware of that when you're getting one. Um, next thing is caging. I've met a lot of people and it really just rubs me the wrong way when I meet people and they say that you can keep an adult bearded dragon in a 20 gallon tank. They can fit in there, but they're not having a good time. Just because a lizard can survive in something doesn't mean it should be in there. You want your animal to thrive. They're in captivity to thrive. They're in captivity to have a good, safe, healthy life. If they want to survive, they're going to be in the wild. So when you have something like this in captivity, give it the best possible life you can. And with that, you have to give them an appropriately sized cage. I have my baby bearded dragon. Um, I might show you a picture, but he's like six, seven inches now. He's getting pretty large, and he's in a 20 gallon tall, you know, so he can climb, and there's a lot of sticks in there. But even then, I feel like it's almost cramped. Probably within the next couple inches, I'll move him up to a 30 gallon. Um, and hopefully, I'll get Spike into a six foot cage. Right here, this is Spike. And, uh,. <laughs> I can stick the baby bearded dragon in this cage, which is actually um, four feet long and two feet wide and four feet high. The four foot height is unnecessary for bearded dragons, but they do enjoy climbing from time to time. Sorry, you can't see them very well. The UV light's really obnoxious. <laughs> but uh, it's got plenty of length. He's two feet long, so it's about double his length. I think it's almost five feet last time I measured, so it's a little bit bigger. Um, but yeah, and it's got height for him to climb. So that's actually the Repti carpet you see in stores a lot. And it's a funny story. I uh, I put it in there because, as you can kind of see, 
the cage is a bit bland as it is. It's just like all brown, you know? And I just thought it was ugly. Really, really ugly. So what I did was I got some of that carpet and I placed it on the back wall. And it's pretty funny. He actually likes to climb up on that. And, sorry, I keep moving the camera. He likes to jump up onto it and then crawl up on the carpet, not touching that log, and jump onto the basking spot. Bearded dragons like to climb, and they're very good at climbing. He rarely uses this log. Usually when he's rushing down for food, he'll just slide down it like a slide. But otherwise, he's always using that carpet to climb up there, which is weird because he's massive. So for bearded dragons, the guideline I follow is you want a cage where it's at least twice their length long and twice their length wide. Now, for an adult bearded dragon, that's about a 40-gallon breeder. Which is, it's plenty of space, because they're not incredibly active lizards all the time, at least in captivity. In the wild, they're always running around. But in captivity, they're not super duper active, so they don't need a ton of space. But I do recommend you take them out and let them explore around your room or whatever and, you know, interact with them. Um, but yeah, so like, my 7-8 inch beardy, you know, he's almost outgrown his 20 gallon tank, so I want to upgrade him soon because... I like to spoil all my animals. Like my leopard geckos, they say you can put them in 10 gallon tanks and again, while that works, they're not thriving, they're not as happy as they could be, you know, happy being a relevant term because they're lizards. But <laughs> uh, I have her in a three foot by two foot cage and she's having a great time. Once I move my goldfish tubby into a 55 gallon, I'm gonna put her into the 40 gallon he's in and she's gonna be even happier. So I just like to give my lizards as much space as possible. With babies, you don't want to throw them in the biggest cage possible. With some monitors, that's the best choice, like with savanna monitors. But something like bearded dragons, you throw a little like two, three inch baby in a 55 gallon, it's not going to be super easy to take care of them. While they can survive in that easily, because in the wild, you know, it's endless, it's going to be very difficult to control him well because it's not as small of an environment where you can control the temperature, the humidity, everything just as it should be for the baby. Um, and with that, we're going to get on to substrates. Here's his substrate. It is dirt. It looks like there's fertilizer in there on the camera, but there's no fertilizer, I promise. It's just organic topsoil mixed with cocoa fiber. Um, and the cocoa fiber is only because that's the old substrate that was in there. Now, I only recommend loose substrate for adult bearded dragons, such as our boy Spike here, because they can process it well. They have much larger intestines and much more developed um, digestive tracts. With babies, it's, their intestines are a lot, like a lot smaller, and they're not as good at processing food. With this said, um, if you have a baby on dirt, um, if the temperature is correct and they have water, they can process it. Um, people have done it before, they've done it for a long time, but it is a little bit risky. With loose substrate, you also only want to do dirt. I prefer organic topsoil because it has no additives that potting soil has, and cocoa fiber isn't digested very easily, while topsoil is. It passes right through the system, especially through adults. If you have their basking temperature correct, then there will be no problem digesting anything you feed them. Uh, and so with babies, I recommend paper towel, newspaper tile, all those. But I'm not a huge fan of newspaper because I had a bearded dragon once and I kept him on it. And he spilled his water one time and then he got the ink all over him. So I had to wash him off and I was scared to death. He was going to get like ink poisoning or something. But... Use those. For adults, you can use the same. I just feel it's a lot more enriching for them to be on dirt because they can dig. In the wild, they naturally burrow and dig around, even the males. And I think that's more for foraging because females dig to find spots to lay their eggs. Well, I think males just, you know, dig for food like most lizards do. And that's why I have my leopard gecko on dirt because she can dig for food as well. And while she may not really find any... <laughs> It's really enriching because it gives them something to do other than just sitting down in their cage, being bored to death. Um, and his dirt is actually bioactive, 
which means it has micro it's like a mini ecosystem it has microorganisms it's got springtails which naturally eat mold and poop and other nasty things it's got roly polies and millipedes i'm sure you're familiar with those those are the same thing as springtails they're just a lot larger and look cooler um he's actually dug up yeah uh, Sorry about that, I was coughing. Uh, he's actually dug up millipedes and roly-polies before. And it was pretty funny because you'd dig them up and then they'd go scurrying around. And he'd chase them like they were crickets. Then you'd get a woof of them. Though the, the uh, roly-polies don't stink, so I didn't get that. But the millipedes he'd like chase. And he'd sniff them, realize they smelled like butt. And then he'd just leave them and they'd go hide. So they don't eat the cleanup crew, which is pretty cool. It means I never have to clean his cage unless he poops up on his basking spot, which he does regularly which kind of pisses me off but you know it happens so I'd say next is the lighting and this will tie into the humidity and temperature just to make things easier because they're pretty closely related so what you want for a bearded dragon debatably the most important part of lighting a bearded dragon would be the UVB right here I've got a strip bulb UVB 10.0 for desert species, you can find these in Pet Coast, Pet Smart, Pet City. Those are the only ones in my town. But you can also order them online and probably find them at expos all over the place. They're not cheap. At Petco, they're like 40 bucks for the, I believe this is 36 inches. Um, but at Reptile Expos, you may find them for like 25 or 30 bucks, but still not super cheap. The reason you want to use the strip UVB versus the coil UVB, which are the little ones you see for cheap, um, is the coil ones, they burn out pretty easily, I've noticed, at least with me using them. And they go bad after about six months. Go bad meaning they don't put off as much UVB radiation. Uh, and they only have like a six to eight inch range where they can actually be effective. This has a 24 inch range, so he gets it all the way up on his basking spot, all the way down his log. And... If for whatever reason he's hanging out up here by the window, which he does a lot, it's also giving him a little bit of UVB. So he's getting it pretty much all over the cage. Not that he needs it a ton at this age, but it's still beneficial, and it makes them a lot happier, and it makes their colors pop. His colors aren't very bright right now because he's pissed off that I'm filming him because he hates the camera. <laughs> but yeah, so invest in that as soon as you get one. You can use the coil ones as babies, but if you have an adult or a big cage, definitely invest in the strip. Um, and what I have for the holder right here, it's just made out of plastic and it's got a couple of hooks and I drilled some holes into the roof for it to go into. <laughs> but, uh, those are, I think I bought it for like 12 bucks at Walmart. It's super duper cheap. Um, and I've had it for almost a year now, so no complaints and it fits pretty well into the four foot cage and it doesn't look horrible because if you see, you know, there's the lid and it kind of blocks at least for my height up here. It blocks the majority of it. So it's not too terrible. Um, next is the actual heating. So for beater dragons, because they're not huge, you only need one bulb. Eventually I'm going to get them two just to make a more even, comfortable basking spot. But I have one up there and it is a infrared ceramic heat emitter. And what that does is it emits heat. <laughs> It puts off no light, as you can see. The only light in this cage is the UVB bulb. <clears throat> that heat emitter is awesome because they last way longer than conventional heat bulbs. The conventional heat bulbs for me last like three months max. I run through those so fast. And I've got, I bought, I believe, three ceramic heat bulbs of a few different wattages. I'm using them for different animals like my Toke Gecko and such. And I've had them for two years now had no problems with them they work perfectly um, so I definitely recommend those they're very very expensive for 75 watt I think it's like 35 bucks but it is definitely worth it because you spend more than that in a year replacing normal heat bulbs <laughs> um, so for the basking temperature you're gonna want to range between 90 and 110 degrees I keep my adult at about a hundred degrees that's inaccurate it's actually 110 never mind <laughs> But um, yeah, his basking spot's about 110, 112, 
and then 103. So he's got a range, like right where he's laying is about 100. So it goes from 100 to 110, then back to 100 on the other side because there's only one bulb. Um, and that's perfectly fine because he's an adult. Um, they can handle the heat a lot better. And obviously he has a massive cage. So if he gets hot, he can go anywhere he wants in there. And 90% of the time he's up there basking. So I see no issue with it. I bet you if you brought it up to 130, there would be no issues. If you went to Australia and measured one of the rocks that the bearded dragons bask on in the wild, it's probably around 130 rather than 100. So I'm not saying push your luck, especially with the babies because they're more sensitive, but you know, they're not incredibly delicate as far as the temperatures go. Now, <clears throat> inside the cage, more on the cool side because the basking side doesn't matter because you got the basking temp, obviously. But on the cool side, you want it about, you don't want it lower than 70. Lower than 70 is when they're going to start having problems. So my cool side, the coldest it gets at night is like 75. And my room is usually about 80 degrees. It's crazy hot in here because the humidity is also 40%. Which also means that his humidity is generally between 30 and 40% inside this cage. Um, only reason it goes down in here is because of the hot basking spot. But his humidity is relatively high, but it's not an issue. Once it gets, when it stays around 50 or 60, that's when he's going to start having respiratory issues. That's when you want to figure out how to lower it. 30% um, is actually the recommended humidity for bearded dragons because it allows them to shed easily. Uh, you know, so you don't have to spray them all the time. Although I recommend spraying, like, really lightly in the morning. Because they like to drink the, you know, quote-unquote morning dew off of everything. So I just think that's kind of a cool little thing that they enjoy doing. <laughs> um, but yeah, and so I'd say next is the water. I actually think it's dried out now. His, oh, no, there's a little bit in there. His water dries out within like a day and a half. It's pretty crazy, but that allows me to clean it out pretty easily because it just dries and then I wipe it out, pour some more water. He doesn't drink all that often. He definitely does drink. I've caught him doing it a lot, but they don't need a ton of water. They're not necessarily desert animals, but they're also not tropical. They're like semi-arid. So give them water. They need it. They'll drink it, but they'll enjoy it. It's good for them. <laughs> um, and I forgot to mention too, the UVB, the reason you want that for the people that don't know is, especially while they're babies, it provides the um, radiation that allows them to process calcium into their bones. So the calcium powder you put on their bugs will go into their, will be able to be processed because of this radiation. So without it, they'll get bone diseases. The previous owners of Spike right here on his leg didn't keep him right. And he actually started getting metabolic bone disease, which is basically when all your bones turn to cartilage which is no good, and his arm broke before they got it fixed, so they never took him to the vet, so it healed weird, so there's a giant bump on his arm, but it doesn't harm him in any way or affect his well-being in any way. The next most important part of keeping a bearded dragon is the feeding. For babies, you want to keep them at, you know, 80% bugs, 20% veggies as they're growing, because they're going to definitely need all that extra protein to grow correctly. Without that protein, they will be underdeveloped, they won't grow very big, and they won't be very healthy. Oh. <laughs> and uh, with adults, you want to feed them like 60% veggies and 40% bugs. The reason you see a buttload of obese bearded dragons is because people just endlessly feed them bugs. Because as you can see, it's super entertaining to feed them bugs. They're so accurate with their tongues, they'll like never bite you, except for my baby he doesn't like me very much <laughs> but uh with the adults you want to feed them like no more than three times a week if you feed decent meals if you feed very small meals you can pull off like four or five days but if you feed them good healthy meals three days is your max so what i do is i feed monday and wednesday veggies sometimes on wednesday i'll throw in a few extra bugs and then friday's a big bug meal so he gets plenty of protein and he gets plenty of veggies. Occasionally you want to throw in some fruit um, as a tree, but you don't want to do that all the time because it's basically candy to them. And they won't really want to eat anything else because it's so sweet. 
except for bugs, they'll never give up bugs. <laughs> um, for veggies, you want to give them turnip greens, mustard greens, um, collard lettuce, or collard greens, sorry. <laughs> Basically, any vegetable that has the word greens after it is perfectly safe for them. And you can Google lists, you know, for what's safe for them. Generally, stay away from kale and cabbage and spinach. While they can eat them, cabbage is basically just water, so there's no nutrients in it. And spinach and kale, they actually bind calcium, so as a treat, they're okay, because mine like them very much. But they don't allow them to absorb calcium as much, so if you feed them a bunch of kale and spinach, they're not going to grow very well, especially babies. So stick with the vegetables with the word green after it. You've also got carrots. My, neither of my bearded dragons like carrots, like at all. Um, but they will eat, some of them will eat them. Uh, what else you got? That's basically it for veggies. Um, for fruits, you got strawberries, blueberries, grapes, you know, all your common fruits. And again, you can Google them just to make sure because pretty much every link out there is going to be reliable because they're such a popular pet. So many people, you know, know what's safe for them. So they're pretty easy to feed. Not much to worry about there. Um, and that's basically it for their care. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope you learned a thing or two if you're new. And if you have any questions, comments, concerns, leave them in the comments section. And thanks for watching.